After an enforced absence, hello and welcome to Why I Love Reaper DAW. In this video, I'll be covering an overview of what Reaper DAW has to offer. But in a future video, I will go into more detail and the specifics of what it can do. Because Reaper DAW, unlike the majority of others, is open source. And it can be as simple as you want it to be, or it can be as complicated as you want to be. You are the master. You decide how you want it to work. So without any further delay, let's go and check it out. Okay, so seeing as this is a general overview of Reaper, we're gonna start from the beginning. And the beginning is at the Reaper homepage. So if I wanted to have a quick look at what it can do, it says do anything. And that is not a exaggeration. Reaper is very, very expandable into whatever you want it to do. The customization element is second to none. The latest version of Reaper 6.8 gives you some details and it also shows you new things that Reaper 6 can do. So if we go down to download Reaper and left click, we see the versions it works on. And as you can see, it is cross platform. It works in Windows 64 and 32 bits, Linux 64 and 32 bit, and Mac 64 and 32 bit purchase. There are two licenses. There's, a, in fact, there are three licenses. There's a 60 day free trial. So you can actually use Reaper in its full format. There's no discrepancy with what you can use. It's a fully functional 60 day free license. So after two months, I think you could probably work out whether it's something that you want to purchase. And the purchase price for the majority of people out there, so if you've got a home studio, you pay £60 or $60, and that covers two full versions. I don't know any other DAW that you can do that with, really, you know, considering what you can get with Reaper. It is, it is what you want it to be. So if you're looking for to change from a different DAW, or you are starting off and you want to test out a DAW, then I would highly suggest you try Reaper. Download user guide, okay, so if we click on that, you have different languages. Themes, now, this is a big one in Reaper. So if we click onto themes, these are themes for Reaper. So what are themes? Themes are one of the most customizable parts of Reaper, where you can change the appearance of your studio. So if we scroll down here, you can see people how people rate certain things. So, for instance, this would be an icon of a guitar that you could stick on guitar tracks within Reaper. This is an icon bar. So if I click on this and we scroll down, these are... I'll click on this one because this one's probably the best out of them. Here, you can see now these toolbars will all have a function and you will know what that function is. You can put a picture to it, or you can have writing. Whatever suits you and suits your workflow and makes sense to you, you can do in Reaper. And this would be done via what we call the actions list, and that will come in a future video. But generally, this is what toolbars look like. They are extremely powerful things to use. Also, within Reaper, you can, like I said, you can change the appearance of your studio. Now that's one way of doing it, but you can actually make a studio look pretty cool. So let's have a look at these, for instance. This is quite a highly rated one. I think this guy's Japanese, possibly. He's got a MIDI keyboard up here. He's got the transport area here. He's got toolbars here. These are, this is the sort of general area toolbar that, you, that loads up a Reaper. You've got your tracks across here and across here. And if we scroll over to another one, there's a more expanded view. And the toolbar has moved down to here. Then this is with a piano roll. So you can see how customizable this is. And you can do 
put all sorts of uh, toolbars on your piano roll as well, not just on the main area here. This is called the control panel, and you can change how things look within Reaper. That is what themes can do for you within Reaper. So let's have a look through here. So we've got Reaper Stash now. Now Reaper Stash is something very similar. You can check things, but you can check out all sorts of things like bank patches, classic themes, custom actions, extension plugins. Now, extension plugins would be things that would come within the repack section. Lots of developers out there for free most of them, yeah, some, some one or two you have to pay for, but the vast majority are absolutely free and very powerful and equally as good as anything that you'll be able to get paid for on the market. And sometimes there are things that you can't even get out there just work in a better way than a lot of them. That's been my experience anyway. And there are people who are extremely intelligent and can code really well. That is another one of the big pluses to Reaper. Ability to get hold of huge amounts of plugins for free through the Repack element. Effects change, you can build great effects chains within Reaper. Effects libraries, JSFX, that is the stock effects that come with Reaper. They're really good, they don't look fancy at all. Uh, they're very plain and bland, but they do the same job as all the other ones that have got very fancy graphics to them. JSFX, highly rate them and they can do a great job for you. Key maps, uh, MIDI drum maps, this is a great one. So if you clicked on here and you had a, a drum software, uh, such as, say, Addictive Drums 2 or Su Superior Drummer 3, and you wanted a map, someone has taken the trouble to develop a map for these two programs. So why not take advantage of their kindness and ingenuity? Okay, so John Mike 8, which is a free one that can be run via contact. I have this one, so I might be looking into that. SWS extensions. So these are the extensions and again, cross platform and you will need to download this in order to uh, help Reaper out, okay? That's the best way I can put it. You can find out how to load this up via the Reaper homepage or just type it into Google, SWS extensions within Reaper, and there'll be, there's loads of videos out there. I'm not gonna go into it here. And then we've got the Repack Manager. So this is what you will need to download to get all these free plugins. And these are some of the developers here. These are external links down here that can give you extra help with different topics. Okay, but you, you must download this so again, cross-platform, and get the platform you need. Find a video that shows you how to do this. It's really easy, and you can take it from there. And then the unofficial Reaper blog. So. This is one of the other guys, who uh, John, who is a master at Reaper, and this is his blog. So these are all videos. He has a YouTube channel, which is fantastic, which I highly suggest you check out. The other guy, if we go back to videos, these are fantastic videos. This is really where you should start. You want to start with how you learn Reaper. Through these videos here, there is nothing that you won't find through all these different sections. It is fantastic. This is one, and this is this is the guy, Kenny Joyer. He is the main man at Reaper. Reaper hire him to produce all their videos, uh, official videos. He is a master producer in his own right, is an absolutely fantastic teacher. Really, really good teacher. You will learn so much if you watch his videos. He's got a great teaching technique. Check his videos out. He also has a YouTube channel as well. But if you go down to those videos that I showed you just now, you'll be fine. Okay, so we've gone through all that. Let's head over to my version of Reaper. If you're enjoying watching this video, please consider smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel so that I can keep on bringing this free content. This is my version of Reaper. You can see registered to my name up the top there, the version, 
there's one version I can update to that I haven't done so yet. This is my template. As I said, Reaper's really cheap, so I suggest you give it a go. This is the master track here. I've got a bus that other tracks within that section will report to. Guitar bus here and the guitar tracks. And I've done a video in the past on my template, so I won't talk too much about that. But as I go down, you can see all the tracks and the buses to go. And then I have an audio bus, which everything except the drums will go to. And then the drums will go directly to the pre-master bus. And then all the audio from the audio bus will then go into the pre-master bus and then we'll go into the master bus at the end here, okay? So I'll bring up the mixer, here we go. Here's the mixer. So again, you get the same view, but in mixer form, okay? And I've created this theme in a dark theme, but with brightly colored tracks. That's the way I like to work. I don't want anything that's too glaring. And also I've made it pretty simple. Uh, I prefer simplicity myself, as with ideas and mixing, I, uh, production and mixing, I can just get on with it and I don't have anything getting in my way. That's the way I like to work, okay? I have plugins that are instantiated from the very beginning within my template and that is something that you can do with Reaper. You can develop your own template which is what I've done here and everyone will have their own ideas on what they want that to be. All audio bus, the pre-master bus and then the master bus at the end here which has plugins on it immediately as well as I open it up. Then over here I have a section and again this is customizable. It didn't start like this. If you want something to move, if you look what I do here, if I press at the bottom here and I start moving this around, you see how that's moved around and I can move it in other places. There we go. Attached again. Okay, so we'll see how we can move forward with all that. Let's get rid of that bar there. So yeah, if you want to have a loop, just drag across there. And then if I want to toggle, R would be the one to toggle. See this green button? That's the loop button. So if, I, if you don't know what something does, just hover over it and it will tell you. And it also tells you the shortcut, in this case at R. So if I want to loop this section, press R. And when I play, it is going to loop the section. Let's have a look at what this red timeline is doing and then there we go it's gone again okay so very simple thing uh, here I have changed this from the original I like to use zero on my keyboard to record uh, to play okay it's spacebar to stop spacebar again to go back to the beginning press W to go to the end you press end on your keyboard you know these are Windows actions Mac ones may differ across here mixing area when i moved it it became free and i can put it anywhere and this is what i've done here okay this is the media area and these are all my files on my external drive okay so i can go through i've got loads and loads of files here then i've got another tab here where i've moved it over here so when it's not in focus it's out of focus so when i do that the media area disappears and then my plugins area comes up that's what I've done with here like I said very customizable if you want to have a look at your when you're setting up first of all you'll need to set up your your sound card so I have a focus right 18i8 you'll have whatever you have if you click on here it brings this up you would need to go to device then it will say what it is so in Windows you want ASIO because I'm using this particular sound card, Focusrite USB, SEO, because it's USB su uh, supported. Just follow through, uh, 441. I, I, I've got 64 here, which works really well when you're tracking. And then configuration as well. So here, if I bring this across, 441, 64 internal. So you would do that there. And then I would double click here and type in 64 as I've done here. If you're mixing, you're going to want to go to 1024. At least 
within this system, but I'll leave it at 64. And you would do the same thing here. You would double click, change it to double click here. And instead of 64, you would type in 1024. Uh, it will depend on your system and what it's capable of. Okay, I've got quite a powerful system here, so I can get down to this sort of this ac access this low number. Some people you might have to work at 128 or 256. It depends on the power of your computer and what it can handle. Okay, and then while we're here in the Reaper preferences, how you get to here, you can do it either up in that top corner or we could come to options. Down to the bottom, preferences, we can see it again this way. That was a general overview of Reaper. It was quite a long one, I know, but I wanted to go through quite thoroughly as to what it can do in general. And in the future video, I'm going to go through far more of the specific. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Serbs out.